Welcome to Wrestle Capsule. I'm your host B, and it has been quite a while since A, I've done an episode, and B, that I've done a raw review. So let's just get down into the nitty gritty, the bloodline, yes, but also with Judgment Day. These two big groups together facing each other, literally facing each other, them working together. I am so intrigued by this. Trouble Chief okay, that was like, let's do this. Usos had no freaking clue what was going on. Solo's just, he already knew, but I mean, he's he only has one facial expression, which is when we're gonna scrap face. The judgment day to take care, because now the bloodline has three problems and they're enlisting the judgment day to handle said problems. And in turn, in exchange for Solo Sokoa to take out Rey Mysterio, which for the longest time has been a thorn in the Judgment Day's booty cheeks. And what was funny to me in this segment was the creepy stare off between Rhea Ripley and Solo Sokoa. Well, at Jay and Solo switch places in the lineup. And as soon as they did that, Finn and Rhea are gonna switch places too. Paul go act like basically are we cool here like are we good and Rhea go respond for now like Rhea doesn't care if you are a man woman alien she's going to if she got a scrap she will scrap and not everyone is on board with it which I like because that leaves holes for bickering fighting now I will say this I like the fact that those two teams are working together because there's there's some common ground, there's some irritations that they have in common. I'm not fully on board with the end goal of it being, if this is even an option of it being Judgment Day versus the Bloodline. Like, I don't wanna see that. That's, they're two strong stables in WWE. Let's just have, I mean, the draft is coming soon and I feel like, one group should be on one show and the other group should be on the other. Like, as simple as that. So Judgment Day be on SmackDown and Bloodline be on Raw. Like, easy, easy peasy. I don't think that they need to cross paths in a sense where they need to fight each other. I'm not interested in that. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what WWE is going to do because I know that they're trying to stretch out this whole thing with Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns taking a break on it, trying to, you know, wait and wait and wait. You know, we're having Backlash and Puerto Rico, and then we're gonna have SummerSlam in Detroit, you know? So I'm just just waiting to see what they're gonna do. I hope they're not gonna do Bloodline versus Judgment Day, but WWE is gonna do whatever it takes to stretch it out, so we gonna see. Sol Sokoa most definitely took care of the Rey Mysterio issue, even with the LWO trying to have Rey Mysterio's back, interfering with the Usos trying to get in the way, Still, Solo Sokoa was able to do the smallest spike and freak up the whole favor and take care of business. But I'm telling you, the, like the bloodline was looking so good. Them freaking up LWO and just like them looking once again unstoppable even after the Usos losing the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships to Sami Zayn and KO. The bloodline still looks stronger than ever, and I feel like this was the point of it. Chad Gable and Maxine Dupree still fighting over Otis's attention, trying to call dibs on this man like he's, I don't know, like he's a stuffed animal. It's ridiculous. So this whole Bianca Belair versus Dakota Kai match, I wasn't feeling it. It wasn't a bad match. I just, it just wasn't one of those matches that I was looking forward to that I was fully invested in. Partly because I already knew that our Raw Women's Champion was going to retain her championship. Even with Dakota Kai losing, I could see the frustration on Bailey's face. And I'm wondering if it's not only because, of course, she's seeing her teammate lose against Bianca Belair in this opportunity for the Raw Women's Championship. Is it that? Or is it also because Bailey is over 
damage control. I wonder how long damage control is still going to be a unit. We already see a slow breaking down. We even see Io Sky and Dakota Kai becoming frustrated with the opportunities or lack thereof, I should say, of opportunities for them to elevate in WWE. And Bailey has a won a championship since she's been in damage control since she came back so i'm curious if damage control is still going to be able to hold up cody rhodes tried to fight brock lesnar coming out ready gear on everything ready to scrap after being annihilated freaked up disrespected beyond measure the fact that cody came out not medically cleared and adam pierce is like no man we respect you man we all respect you but you are not medically cleared why don't you save this for backlash in puerto rico why are you playing these games you already got freaked up before like we got your best interests at heart dog no do it you got the wwe officials coming out what does Cody do? Cody's like, F y'all, bring out Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar comes out. Cody should I fight through all these men. He freaks up the officials like I know. He is racking up thousands upon thousands of dollars in fines. Like the, the amount of bed that Cody Rhodes freaks up in the ring just to try to get to Brock Lesnar is hilarious. I want it now. I don't want to wait for backlash. Like let's go right this out. And the whole time, Brock is laughing. He is fully entertained. It was it was so freaking funny because this man is just ready to go again. He's ready to F5 again. He's ready to German suplex. Hit say win. That's what he's on. He's on that say win tip. The Seth freaking Rollins versus The Miz match? I don't even understand. Like, this whole time, like... The Miz has been playing it safe for years and every time he would have a match a lot of times it's you know either with a celebrity or it's always at the expense even if it's with a regular you know WWE superstar it will always be at the expense of The Miz to lose and for his opponent to win but this match right here even though Seth Rollins did win the performance that Seth put on was dope but what I want to talk about is the performance of The Miz. Like, he put in work. Like, this was an engaging match. Like, I had to, usually whenever Miz comes on and he has a match on Raw, I got my phone, I start texting or whatever. Like, no, sis put the phone down, eyes glued to the television. What's up with the what's up? It was, it was, it was good. Why, where has The Miz been with this? Why did it take this long for me to see what I used to see back in the heyday? Like, Miz, what do you, stay awake, man. Stay awake, like, keep wrestling like this. I kid you no lie, it felt like The Miz was fighting for his life. <laughs> he was fighting for his WWE life to stay relevant. Like, this man fought to stay relevant and to not be a afterthought in WWE history. And he delivered. Seth delivered too. Didn't really care about the United States Championship match champion Austin Theory versus Bobby Lashley. Didn't care about the match itself, but the <laughs> ending of the match, which was, it ended up being a freaking no contest because Bronson Reed interfered and he's got beef with Bobby Lashley. So these two got issues. I like that because it's keeping Lashley busy all the while elevating Bronson Reed because he has not been utilized well yet since his return to WWE and him being on the freaking main roster. For Bronson Reed to be rubbing shoulders with Bobby is a good look. And then of course Austin Theory, he is not gonna be upstaged. This is his championship match. Of course he's got to be involved. So overall the ending was pretty dope and I like that and it, it got me interested and invested into what is gonna happen next with Bobby and Bronson. Austin, eh, not so much. Trish Stratus addressing the WWE Universe the way that she did when she cut that promo when she was spitting phys -ex. Bruh, we get a reason. We got a reason finally as to why she freaked up Becky Lynch. And apparently, Trish had it out for Becky since the get-go. I'm, I'm standing in my kitchen at this point making myself dinner. Eyes glued to the television. 
harping on every word that Miss Trish Stratus, Stratus Faction Miss, had to say. She had it out for Becky Lynch, and she wanted to do whatever it takes to take them tag team titles from Becky. And honestly, Lita was just a casualty. <laughs> That's what I saw it as. Lita was just there. She had to move Lita out of the way so she could handle business. No one should ever forget who Trish is, how she built the women's division. She was so disrespectful and she was so full of herself. I cannot wait to see what other promos Miss Trish is going to be dishing out to us and what she gonna say face to face to Becky because Becky on Twitter talking about, I'm not gonna make it to Raw, like she, she's, She's dealing with things. So we had a women's tag team match. We had Candice LeRae and Mia Yim versus Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. And Chelsea and Sonya won. Bruh, this match just seemed quick. It just seemed like a fast match, a fast win. I'm not surprised that Sonya and Chelsea won because I'm seeing WWE is pushing these gals. They're pushing these gals and they want them to go up against Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan, who are our current women's tag team champions. So, I mean, I saw the writing on the wall from the get-go, but like this match did really to have all the, the to have these four women in this match, these talented women in this match, that's the match that we get? That's what we gotta, you gave us that. This goes to show how much WWE truly cares about the women's tag team titles. Nada, in the words of Top Dollar, not nada. <laughs> Bruh, this this main event, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens and Matt Riddle versus the Judgment Day. Bruh. Judgment Day, let's just cut to the chase. Judgment Day did not hold up their end of the bargain. Bloodline did with Sol Sokoa beating the freak out of our Hall of Famer, Rey Mysterio. But when it comes to Judgment Day, they did not deliver because Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, who are our current undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions with the side of Matt Riddle, defeated the judgment day <laughs> the ending of this like they're pulling out all the stops right now because they know and i'm talking about wwe they know that people are pissed off people are over raw right now raw has been booty cheeks so for them to end raw like that with all that craziness like from start to finish like it started off crazy and it ended crazy their wwe is definitely trying to dust off the cobwebs and just <laughs> and try to run and get it done. Now, what I'm curious about is how the tribal chief Roman Reigns is going to handle this because the Judgment Day didn't do their job. <laughs> they got pistol whipped by our current tag team and with the side of Matt Riddle. Like, what is going on? I know he's gonna seek revenge. I know the bloodline is super pissed, big mad. Guys, let me know what you thought about Monday Night Raw. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more episodes. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking with me with my little impromptu hiatus, trying to get back into the swing of things. So stay tuned for more episodes, more videos, more reviews. Signing off, bye.